Fitness, and I'm here with Eva Redpath, who is a group fitness personal uh, expert, personal trainer, to mainly women. Why women only? Well, I started a class called Body Conditioning by Dancers. It's an eight-week body conditioning class that is conditioning the body from a dance training perspective. Yep. That's my background, and I thought that I would specialize in women's fitness. Excellent. So you've been doing this for how many years now? Well, I have 20 years of dance experience, and the business has been running itself for four. Now, let me ask you this before we get into our demyst uh, demyst demystifying uh, stuff, uh, debunking the junk here. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a guy, and I'm interested in classes. Should I enroll in classes, even if you're not doing the guy stuff? Absolutely. The group fitness is great for the social aspect, not to mention to have a teacher and the mirrors at the front of a classroom can really hope, help you with your own form and technique and getting an expert to correct you a little bit just to make sure you're doing the exercises properly. I might even try this in a couple of seconds here just for the that. fun of it all. Myth. The longer the workout, the better the results. Okay, so it's going to have to be about exercise quality over exercise quantity. I'm always amazed by clients who are coming to me saying, you know, Eva, I'm in the gym two hours a night, five days a week, and I'm not getting the results that I want. And the thing here is, is you're going to be doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. In my opinion, it's time to switch up your routine. Excellent stuff. You know, I'm going to get on the floor before we continue our myths here. I'm going to try some of this stuff. So okay, guide me through. Do. Guide me through. And, and you know what? At the same time... Um, we're going to take a call from uh, Alina. Excellent. Alina's calling in from Toronto. Alina, go ahead with your question. So come on up like this. We're going to extend, and then slowly we're going to reach under, holding your core nice and tight. Excellent. And then you're going to come up. Nice yeah, and controlled. Yeah, there's some balance involved in that. That's right. Core stability, balance, flexibility, and control. Excellent. And with that rolling across the room, we'll try that one more time. Whoa. Kirk, I'm going to ask you why we're not doing this in the next pack, buddy. <laughs> so if we can take that call from Alina, who's calling in from Toronto, and we'll uh, take her question here. Do we have her? Hello? Alina, no, not yet. Hi, Alina, there you are. Hi. I have Go ahead with your question. Again. Welcome to the show. I want to know if there are any exercise for the abs to tone your abs. I know that Pilates is actually really great, but are there any other exercises right, to I'm, tone it? I'm hearing you ask a question here. It's a little bit of a broken signal here, but something about abs and improving your abs? That's right. Okay, you know what, as you heard from Kirk in the first pack, there's really no such thing as spot training, but let's go and ask our expert here. We've got a question here. Alina's asking, you know, some, in, you know, some information about how she could improve her abs. You know, again, no spot training, but right. for abs. Sure. Um, what I would recommend is core conditioning. So actually, I'm going to get the girls to go into the core exercise for you. And in terms of conditioning, Alina, I would recommend just working full body exercises, concentrating on core stability. And that's really going to help her build strength for function, which is performance in everyday activity. And that's the way we should be thinking these days. Actually, you know, and I felt it when I was doing whatever I was doing right there for right. my abs. Let's ask uh, some of the girls here. Are you feeling it in your abs what you're doing? Oh, yeah. Totally. The core is really actually something uh, people are most often underdoing, right? So uh, it's a challenge. Yes, it is a challenge. And uh, Eva, oh yes, I've had a back injury. Yeah. And what's really helped me is body conditioning by dancers and Eva's class in focusing on my core and core strengthening to support my back. Excellent, I hear you're already out of breath and that means that things are working, right? Eva, I can learn my exercise routine from a magazine and or a DVD. Okay. So there's really great material out there these days, but I would always recommend consulting with your physician as well as a fitness professional. Like I mentioned before, proper alignment, proper technique and form is essential in exercise safety and effectiveness. Excellent. Let's take another call. We've got uh, Millen calling from uh, Toronto. Welcome to All on Health. Hi there. Hi. Do you have a call? you have a question for uh, yes. our expert? Yes. I do have a question about lower back. How do I strengthen my lower back? You have pain in your lower back and you want to know what kind of exercise you should be doing? Exactly, yes. Okay. So exercise for lower back. Right. So again, with the core stability exercises, I've got a lot of great exercises that are working full body. It's a standing position and it's called a panche. I'll Show actually... me one now because yeah. you know what? I've got lower back pain as well. I know one of your girls here uh, does also. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can do uh, so some lower back exercises. Just standing, you're going to start like this. Your body's going to be in a plank position. Your arms are going to be pitched down by your side. 
You're going to st stand up nice and tall with tall posture. You're going to bring your belly button into your spine, and then you're going to pitch forward. I feel like I'm doing... Uh, oh, you know what? Kirk has me doing these. Really? You know, yeah, yeah. Well, right not, not, not that sort of lead up with the plie style ballerina stuff that you had in the beginning it's there, but true. definitely it's with true. weights, he's got me doing this, uh, yeah. you know, this uh, leaning forward thing. Exactly. And that does stabilize uh, the lower back. That's right. And that's all what this is about. Really practical movements using as many parts of the body as you can all at once to condition and strengthen. Excellent stuff. Well, I'll let you continue your class there. We've got another call from uh, Maria who's on the line. Do you have, you have any uh, questions for our expert or myself, Maria? Yes, hi Bryce. Um, I hi. was watching, I, I'm really glad that you guys are touching on people with back injuries because I have a back and a neck injury, but um, I can move my lower body, right? But I, I'm not at the point yet where I can sort of move, have much movement in my back or my neck, so I don't want to re-injure myself or make it worse, but what can I do, like, to maybe even work on the lower part from my waist and down that's more mobile? That part of my well, body. It's actually, with, yeah, without it's a, it's a very good question. Neck. It's a very good question. So, you know, there's no spot training for a so specific area, but I think getting a personal trainer on your team and deciding what it is that is, you know, a little weak and how you might want to strengthen those areas so that they compensate for the areas that are maybe a little bit lax is a good idea. But again, we've got a, we've got a person, Maria, who's on the phone, is asking this common question. She's got some back pain here and some back pain there. Doesn't want to re-injure those areas. But, you know, part of her back is okay. Is there anything she can do? Right. I would recommend slow, controlled movements. And make sure, when in doubt, you're supposed to be consulting with a professional. There's people who can help you t with these injuries in terms of recovering them and strengthening the proper areas and being easy on the areas that are still injured. Okay. I hope that helps, Maria. Maria might have made this mistake as well as a lot of us do. Myth. You don't have to warm up before exercise. Right. So stretching pre-workout and warming up are two different things. Warming up using dynamic movements which will prepare you for the workout is extremely important. Then your static stretching should be done at the end of your workout to maintain range of motion and flexibility. Excellent stuff. Well listen, thank you so much for all that you're uh, showing us here and all that you're doing. Excellent tips. We'll have more of you a little bit later on in the show. When we come back, uh, we're going to be talking about how to replenish your body after a workout, and we'll be giving away three three-month memberships to Extreme Fitness. So call us, tweet us, or email us right now. And don't forget to stretch before you exercise.